The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. And I got Lou from Fairfield, Connecticut, man. How you doing, Lou? I'm doing good, Daryl. And I got to tell you, you're not just blowing hot air out there. I think the way you look at the market is terrific. You're a nice guy as far as over the TV. All the research you do, all the homework you do, I truly appreciate it. I appreciate the, your view of the market. It's awesome. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Four eight traditionally at seven two seven four four five one zero four four. Now, Daryl Martin. All right, folks, I'm back here to the Diagnostic Tree Hour. I'm your host, Daryl Martin, here on TFNN, coming to you live inside the eSignal platform on Tiger TV at TFNN.com and on your mobile phone at TFNN.MOBI. Let's check out where the markets are at right now. Up ahead of the FOMC, we got S&P is up 22 points. Russell's up 19. The Nasdaq's up 30. And the Dow's up 146 points right now. Copper right now in positive territory, uh, up uh, 0.42. And we got gold is up about 80 cents. Silver is up over 1% on the day already. Natural gas up 2% right now. So with a nice move over there going on and uh, the energy markets, we got oil flying up two points, up 3.8%. Lots of stop orders as people have been riding this thing down, getting hit and uh, making it sort of go down slow and fly up. We've seen some fast up moves in just, you know, seconds or minutes moving 90 ticks and then moving on back down. But it's uh, been a great day overall um, watching these trades and uh, just, you know, looking at you know, the oil market right here showing you the oil chart and uh, be rolling over here, roll over in process this week, but uh, short and just flying on back down, popping up, hitting short, flying on back down. I mean, just some massive quick moves. Um to the upside, and then you know, slowly but surely, just you know, working its way on back down. Um, and let's see here, what do we got going on in uh, the currency markets? Oh, I guess the ag markets can cover those. Up a couple points on corn, up six points on soybeans, and uh, and uh, let's see, looking over at the dollar index, up half a percent. And let's see what else we got. We got a uh, pound dollar is down 95 pips. We got euro dollar down 89. Uh, looking over at euro pound down 22. Dollar franc up 75 pips. Dollar yen up a buck 18. Got the euro yen up 44 pips on the day. And let's see, looking for a few other things. We got Aussie yen up 27 pips. Aussie dollar is down 39 pips. Bonds right now slightly, uh, or ticks, whatever. Uh, we got bonds down slightly negative. We got a dollar index is up half percent on the day. So king dollar uh, pushing on strong right now. We got, uh, like I said, uh, I talked about oil already up a couple points. And we, or, you know, a couple points meaning $2. And we got pound yen is up 52 on the day. All right, that catches you up on your lunchtime market wrap. And let's dive on into just some of the, you know, general news that's going on. We'll talk a little bit more about the FOMC stuff as well. And um, stocks, Wall Street 30 is, let's see, climbing on up um, after that three-day drop right on that Fed decision. Pound dollar dropping below uh, the 5,700 ahead of the FOMC statement that, uh, Big uh, mark right there. Bitcoins uh, in the news trading at a 10-week low. And uh, don't forget, uh, you do got Bitcoins over on Nadex. Uh, you know, liquidity's not real heavy on them yet, about 20. So they're not massive. They got a, they only have dailies. But, uh, you know, sort of fun to look at. Uh, probably not my primary trading uh, vehicle of choice. But it is out there if you want to, you know, look at a way to trade those with defined risk. Uh, looking on over at consumer uh, inflation. And... Um, Right now, consumer inflation post a largest decline it's had in six years. Uh, diving on back into, um, let's see, reviewing oil. And now we pull that. I'll pull that chart back up. I want to talk about it a little bit. We had uh, oil inventory come on out, and right there, a lot of <laughs> lots of lines. Let me see if I can maybe uh, stretch that chart out a little bit. 
to bring it on down for you. But we did get a big, big pop right there on the news. Came out to 1030, dropped down, popped up really fast and uh, flew on up there. So as you can see, moving up pretty uh, nice and fast all the way up two points after that inventory report. Let's see anything else we can look at on that. Let me pull up the inventory report specifically. We'll go into it, see how it came out, what it said, and uh, what you might be able to do to take advantage of it. Uh, we're looking at uh, I'll pull Forge Factory. It's just uh, one of the many easy sites to look at news on. And we go here, we look at the oil inventory. Oil inventory came in at a negative uh, 0.8 million on expectation, negative 2.6, so lower than expected inventory. Would go with the concept of you know higher price. Um, and uh, decreased by 0.8 million barrels from the previous week, and but they're in the upper limit of the average range for this time of year. So basically, even though it's lower than what was expected, it's not um, much off of what the average is. And I don't, I'm sorry, they're static. I don't know what to do right now, so I can stop the show. Or I keep going. I can't do anything about it. Um, anyways, but uh, it's in the upper limit of the average range for this time of year at the moment. Um, Let's see here, and so, you know, that upper range helped with that uh, drop, but then uh, the bottom line is the number is lower than expected, and oil flew on up, and really hitting those key levels. And let me see if there's anything else I can go over, but that's that's really the primary stuff on oil right now. There's obviously lots of uh, oil news flying out everywhere. And... Let's see, uh, moving to a report there. We've got uh, quick moves off of these. Got bounces off, uh, you know, the take profit levels. Um, if I go in and add on and just look at the basic uh, ebb and flow of the apex pattern. Let me load that up. That'll take one second. And... Um... So I said that big uh, move on up there. Apex is flying on up, just up, 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 up trades off inventory and everything else going long most of the morning. But at a certain point, it had a short right there. Then got another long, popped right on up to that short level again and came on right back down. All right, so uh, that gives us a nice quick review on oil and where it's at. We've also had some uh, nice moves on the indices this morning, um, flying on up. And uh, let me see, we pull up S&P. I was looking at a few trades there and uh, yesterday, but pop on over. There we go. And uh, right from this morning, started off a little slow, a little choppy, but uh, went on up. Um, went long, had a you know, nice, nice setup right there. Came on back down and had another uh, long entry with a you know, long um, you know, pro like entry level I was looking at. Fired up. Shot all the way up. Just kept going, going, going. Right up to the short entry on ES. And then pulled on back down. Uh, so, anyways, just some nice turns right there. Uh, looking over at Russell. See a lot of the same thing going on. And I'll put that chart up here. Let it refresh and open on up. And I'll share that screen with you. We'll talk about Russell a little bit. And uh, we'll also go in and talk uh, a little about FOMC and 5-Minute Binaries today while we're at it. Um, looking on over here at the Russell, uh, got a little ch started off choppy in the morning, ran up, uh, did well on that, and the, the sort of ebb and flow again. Finally got another long. That long did take off before um, you know hitting those target levels and sort of pulling back. And now there's you know, quite a bit of chop right there in that process. Um, that wraps up the you know the couple of the major indices that I like to trade. Personally, I'm, I'm bigger on Russell and S&P than the other ones. Nasdaq is you know can be a little bit crazy for me, but uh, it's you know still a lot of people love it. Dow a little bit uh, smoother than I like. Um, but anyways, a lot of nice trade potentials and good setups across the board on each one of those indices. Um, let's see here a couple of things that I've went over um, lately. I, I was talking to some traders last night. And we were talking about spreads and edging into those spreads, basically setting up, looking for a good trade. So when you see, hey, the market's going up, and I got a short up here, trying to find that spread ahead of time that have a low risk, expecting a nice pullback. And if you can go in and find one for, say, a $15, $20 risk on the trade, even though you're giving up, let's say it's like you can find one where the ceiling is right at or near the uh, your entry level, 
give up a couple of those points, but have no stop loss. Thing moves down four or five points, then you know make a you know decent profit on the trade, and especially on FX pairs. So uh, one of the ones that I, I find uh, work a little bit better even uh, with the spreads in that case, just uh, due to the edge of a lot of times the premium is a lot lower inside those FX spreads. And i uh, been talking to some traders that are trading some pretty good size. Like they, they love the spreads. Um, and then, uh, you know, the big uh, big benefit is, you know, the risk difference between the spreads and the uh, binaries. And um, on the spreads and the binaries, you know, if you'll get a $100 spread or like $100 wide spread like on, say, S&P or $100 binary, you know, maybe you're only up 15 ticks if it only moves, you know, point and a half in your favor by expiration. But if you're, you know, if it moves, you know, say 10 ticks against you, you're only down tick ticks on a spread. You're not down like say the full 50 bucks. It could be putting up 50 bucks on an at the money spread. And so you got a you know nice prop potential, but it, you get that simple one dollar for one tick at expiration value, and uh, so you don't have to necessarily suffer that full loss and to, unless you're just totally wrong on the trade. And if you're totally wrong on the trade, the binary loss anyway. But if you're only like a little bit wrong, then the spread only loses a little bit versus a binary losing everything. So just a couple of differences. People are asking me spreads versus binaries. And they, you know, they all have their unique advantages. Um, let's see here. Yeah. Uh, what else do we got uh, going on? I'm looking at the uh, news calendar. Last night's news, today's news. Let's pull that up. Let's walk through each one of those trades, see how they did, where they're at. And uh, so first thing, I'll just put uh, you know, the news right up here. And we're looking at for potentially a nice big move over on Chrome. And so not on Chrome, but on Pound. Um, and then let me go in and look at the news trading plan. I'll pull that up. We'll talk about what we were looking at on that trade, and we'll open up a uh, just a simple chart. And uh, sorry about the ticking, folks. And we'll try to take care of that during the break. Not quite sure why that's coming through like that right now. Um, and let's see here. So I'm going to go over to Pound. I'm going to put a 10-minute chart, and we'll said, dive into these new trades as a review. All right. And, okay, so I got it up. One more second. Just got to, you know, live. Got to pull up a bunch of charts when I'm flying through all these different researchers just focusing on one here. Um and our trade specifically that we're looking at on this. So there we go. There's our pound dollar chart. We're expecting to get a pretty decent move on it. Sometimes we do. Obviously, sometimes we don't. Uh, what kind of move did we get versus the expectation? We were looking for at least a 40 tick move, if not more. And we were going in um, on the trade balance and all that coming out. And uh, we'll talk about that when we get back. Stay right there. you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. 
Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Check out the new look of Tiger TV. Now you can see all hosts, charts, and computer screens live in high definition. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rose, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesamento, Andy Hecht, Think or Swim, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV. Now, crystal clear in high definition, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't seen the new look of Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com. Daryl, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Uh, anyway, so uh, some, there's some sort of static issue, folks. We're not quite sure what is going on with it. They're, we're trying to get it figured out. Uh, let me go ahead and bring that pound dollar chart back up, trying to simplify things as much as I can on the computer in order to bring things up. Um, all right, so let's go into, let me reload up my template here, and we'll check it out and see what we got. Um, and uh, sorry, I'm just trying to see if there's anything I can adjust to help out on this because we don't know why it's having the uh, issue that it's currently having. But I, I hear it too. So, um, uh, I'm sorry, just hold on, folks. So, if you can't hear the, the show, it doesn't matter what I'm saying. Um, let's see here. All right, let's give me one minute, okay? Um, let's see here. I'm trying to pull this up. I just want to get this fixed for y'all so y'all can hear it clear. I'm not quite sure why our audio is getting interrupted at the moment. Uh, looking on over, I guess, at pound dollar. We may get a commercial break here to try to fix this. Um... Uh, and let's see here. Just in one minute, we'll go back in and see if we what we can do about it. We got um, 
an 11 p.m. entry for a 7 a.m. expiration. And let's see if we can find that on the chart. We'll zoom it out. And uh, cue that up there. Okay. So looking at the 11 o'clock entry. Taking that over to the 7 a.m. Pretty flat as far as holding on to the trade goes. And, uh, but we did get a move down about uh, 40 pips, literally right off of the trade on that down to the low. Uh, all right, start there. We'll be back. We'll see if we can get this audio working. Quiet Markets investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading, and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Each and every time that the dollar ticks higher, S&P wants higher price. Each and every time that the dollar is ticking lower, guess what? S&P wants lower price. Dollar, the metals, and the S&P are going tick for tick. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. 
tfnn.com. Educating investors. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading, and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Folks, I'm back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. I think we might have got the issue uh, solved. We'll find out here in just a moment. Uh, I'm going through looking at everything, but uh, getting the pound dollar on back up, and we we're going through that trade specifically with an entry at 11 p.m. for a 7 a.m. expiration. We saw it did go down. It popped back up. Always the challenge on a straddle. But uh, how far down did it go? And let's see. So moved on down. We got 50 pips out of the trade. That's about all we got out of the trade. But then it ran it right back up. So unless you had a really cheap uh, entry or you were up and you took profit on the trade, it pulled back. That one didn't work out as well. Um, going on in and looking at some of the other trades. I'm having to open a few more things up so I can get things going again here for you. So give me just a second. But, uh, but like I said, wanted to cover the, you know, the last little bit here talking about the FOMC going into that specifically and any other new trades that we have on the calendar as well for today. Uh, um, all right, so here we go. So we got that one. We had uh, one other uh, report that we had this morning was the CAD wholesale sales. And uh, so once I get uh, my data feed going live on FX, I'll switch on back over to that. Um, but we can at least uh, talk about the other trades that are coming on up. 
We got FOMC, usually a pretty uh, hefty mover. Uh, can go in, adds a lot of implied volatility inside the options. I was noticing that more this, that this morning. You may have noticed that. Binary spreads, everything being a little bit more, you know, you could say expensive, uh, which can be good if you're collecting premium. Not so good if you're, you know, paying it. And uh, just seeing that really pushing that toward the center as they're trying to accommodate for those larger expected moves that are coming up with the OCMZ announcement. Well, how do you take advantage of that? Well, if the IV is extremely high, you can go in and uh, potentially do a decent, you know, potential neutral trade. And uh, some of those are looking for, you know, say at least 50 pips on, you know, euro or pound, uh, maybe even more if you can get it. And uh, just to show you an example, go in here, let me pull up the scanner for you. And we'll walk through it. Uh, and it looks like I almost got the other connections up there. But right over here, if we go down, we're looking at the prices, and we pull up, say, you know, pound dollar. Okay. And just to see, and we're really going to look more for, you know, right at this point, probably looking a bit later, unless you're doing the 30-minute iron condors on the trades. I'm just trying to see, is there a good floor ceiling? Because that's the other challenge this way. We're not too f incredibly far off uh, from where the market is right now, uh, but that's still going to be a little bit uh, pushing it there. I'm trying to see if we got a good one that we can pull off here. And uh, let me back that down to 0 0.5, make it a little bit easier for me to see. Or we'll just get rid of it. There we go, and we'll see all of them. Um, okay, so you probably get out, you're looking for a lower risk spread on one side, and uh, sorry, a higher risk spread with a lower profit, and not really in the center at the moment. Uh, the idea is you want the max profit on the buy side and the max profit on the sell side to be greater than 50 bucks. If you're going to say we got pound dollar, euro dollar, really any of those currency pairs. Uh, the biggest challenge, again, finding one this late in the game. That's what we talked about getting a little bit earlier on those trades, getting this late in the game on these uh, because a lot of that premium is already gone or the market's moved too far away from the uh, floor ceiling. But here is a, you know, like this buy would be an example. And oh, it's pretty deep in the money. And uh, let's see here. What was that? So 24.10. On a ceiling, yeah, so you're not going to get enough uh, premium right there. It's like 30 bucks. But if you would have got in you know, three, four hours ago, potentially could have got about 25 on both sides. And that's sort of the idea. Is if you can go to get that premium, so if it goes up 50 or down 50, you're break even on the trade. You have to go up 100 or down 100 for you to be at a one-to-one -one on your max profit. But if it pops up, like, say, 60, 70, and then it comes back inside that range of the iron condor, then you're able to be profitable. Now, some of the uh, ranges we were looking at on the uh, closer time frames, right here, like on 30 minutes, we were looking at, you know, trying to get, you know, 20 bucks on Aussie, 25 on Euro, 30 on Pound, 20 on Dollar CAD, 25 on Dollar Franc, and 20 on Dollar Yen. So, you know, if you could pull those off, then that would be, you know, th those are ones that are going to expire right at FOMC at 2 o'clock. So, if we were looking at that, we're going, okay, so we only want the 2 o'clock expirations, which are coming right up. At this point, there's really not anything that's lining up perfectly where that market's right in the center. Okay, so right up here, like right in the center. Um, and what do we got? Let's see if we look at, let's say the euro, where the euro trading at at the moment. And uh, what we see over here is trading at 24.16. So basically, how close can we get to 24.16? That's about as close as we can get. You can see there's not really any premium on that side. And then, so 24.10 and 24.10, yeah, you're only getting, you know, you know, eight bucks of premium or so combined. So it's not going to be enough. We do expect, you know, as much as 20 pips in the last 30 minutes. Um, so too narrow right there at this point. And, but at least you know the expectations. You can use that. If the market moves up, moves down, stays in that range. And uh, just to give you an idea, I mean, looking over here at the euro and you know, what have we been getting, you know, our range right here, we'll go to two o'clock. And so far, we've had pretty much high to low of about 17, so staying inside that 20 pip range. Um, and, you know, accommodating for potentially a little bit more um, as the, you know, as more time adds out. But uh, it's, it, you see how it really just went really flat. And this is under one of those, like, put it in your trade journal, remember it, um, that, you know, the market go about 11 o'clock. The market really going choppy, like right there. So in euro dollar. So for the next time FOMC comes out, 
And if you can start to learn some of that, I mean, we got some good volatility this morning with some nice trades. Uh, but things definitely did flatten out on us. And it's not a bad thing. It's just remember it. You know, remember it next time. Things really flattened out. Is there any kind of butterfly or condor? Or do I need to be really careful about taking any position trades right at this point? Not obviously just because of the 2 o'clock. You, know, you want to be real careful on that because markets can go nuts here in about 19 minutes. But also just you know, don't expect a whole lot of movement and right around 11 o'clock and it's done. See that's pound dollar. Uh, let's go. Let's look at some other currency pairs. And I just want to see if we see this as a consistency. So that way you can learn this for every time FOMC comes out. Like when do I need to expect the market to flatten out? Uh, dollar yen gave us a little bit more volatility. We got one more umph to about 12. And then we went pretty flat on the dollar yen. But, uh, you know, most of the currencies overall, I mean, it's really coming back down to where it was. It's had a little spike, pulling right back down to right where it was around 11 o'clock at the moment. Um, we go in and, you know, we can check out some of the others, like, say, dollar CAD. And uh, just, you know, sort of understand these patterns. Again, notice this one had a nice move. Now, we also had oil going, so dollar CAD is going to be affected heavily by oil. But still, by 12 o'clock, flat. So two hours out from expiration, or out from uh, the inventory report. We're going to dollar franc, and, you know, check that out. So that one actually stopped about about 11 o'clock. We pretty much stopped with any volatility on it. So somewhere between 11 and 12, we're seeing a consistency of whatever move is going to happen has sort of happened until 2 o'clock. And if you understand that, you, uh, you won't be hopping in trades and wondering why nothing's happening. Or you'll be going, how can I take advantage of nothing happening? One of the two. Um, so right here, we're going over to, you know, even Aussie Yen, more volatile pair, sort of, you know, that Yen, like I said, they had that last spike at 12, but then just stayed right in that range. You know, for really the last hour and 40 minutes, we'll probably do that right into um, the announcement that comes on the Fed funds. And remember, there's going to be two waves on this announcement. There's going to be the 2 o'clock where the statement comes out, you know, rate obviously comes out, all that stuff comes out. That'll be the first wave. Then at 2.30, This is very this is one of the like really simple but important lessons um, as a trader for you to learn is how to go in there and how to look at there's some heads crazy head stuff on here uh, go in and learn how to look at there we go uh, these markets and understand their temperaments for different times of day I mean think about rush hour traffic. Okay, when is it going to be really congested? When are you going to be able to drive? When are you going to be able to fly? You know, there's certain times of day, I know if I get on the freeway, I'm only going to be able to go 30 miles an hour. You know, other times I'm going to be able to go, you know, 60, 70 miles an hour. If you understand that about the markets, that there are certain times when it's just going to slow down, then, like I said, one, you stop taking, you know, directional moves. Uh, and two, you start going, well, is there any way I can get around this where I can potentially make some money when it's not going anywhere? And this is one very consistent pattern that you can see. And we're seeing this across all the markets right now. And uh, even getting real flat right there, getting Russell right up to one deviation and then just flattening out since noon, about two hours before uh, the FOMC comes on out. Um, NASDAQ. And we'll pull that one up, see what, you know, how did it do? Didn't quite get to the one deviation mark. Um, let's see if we didn't really have a low mark. Didn't quite get the point seven. But uh, right there about noon, had one little drop back, but still, you know, staying pretty, you know, within, you know, five, ten points up down on NASDAQ here for the last two hours. And uh, but a little more volatile than the others. So also important to remember if you're doing neutral trading, NASDAQ looks like it's a little more volatile. You can go back on your charts. You can look historically. You can use Forex Factor. You can find previous release dates and see how these markets have moved. That's, you know, that's what I do. I go back, I look at, and, you know, the time to the research. And, uh, for example, if you go on here... 
and you go down and you find you know the FOMC statement, it'll tell you all the previous dates. You can open those up in their own tab if you want to, but really you have all these dates, so you know what dates to go to and look at. And then if you want to double check the time, it's going to be at, you know usually two o'clock unless there's time change. You got one o'clock, but um, right there, you can see each one of those releases when they came out so you can know what time to look at on your chart and line them up. So if you open each up, basically open up each date, scroll back on your charts, you know, use like a continuous contract to help you out, see if they're flat like I'm talking about. I mean, don't just trust me, but go look at it for yourself. Uh, but at least be aware of it, even if you're not going to go back and do the homework, be aware of that. See, we're seeing the same thing on the Dow. Uh, we can go over, what about, you know, the commodities? So let's check them out. Let's see how they're reacting Couple hours for FOMC. We got gold, obviously, heavily influenced by the dollar. Had some nice, nice moves. Um, you know, earlier ran on up, came on back down, but then just really ever since you know had that one spike right there before 11. But after 11, it's really staying here in a two-point range. So going right into FOMC, we'll see a nice big move after, but just seeing it stay right inside that range. Um, and then let's see here, going down, we'll check out silver and on. Silver right there as that loads on up. Is it doing the same thing? So, yep, we're getting that since 12 o'clock. Really, I mean, you can almost say since 11. Really, there really hasn't been a lot of movement. So we had a little pop right there, but then again, it flattened out. And the, you just, I can't stress the importance of knowing when the news is going to happen and accounting for it, not necessarily trading it, not necessarily trying to predict exactly how everything's going to move, but just more predicting the, you know, you don't have to be a prophet to tell people at, you know, 5 o'clock that the, the freeway is going to be slow and you're going to have rush hour traffic, okay? You know that from historical how people react. This is how people react before FOMC. They stop taking large directional positions. Still see, you know, quite a bit of volatility over in oil, but uh, not near like what we were seeing this morning. Um... Let's see here. Let's go in and, I mean, I'm just looking at some of the different ones. You know, just, and it's, it's an idea you can test on um, whatever it is you trade. But uh, looking over at, let's see, you know, corn. I mean, obviously they had a big, nice move this morning. Pulled on back, staying pretty flat. Usually not as heavily impacted by it. Uh, we could also go into the, uh, let's see, dollar index. I don't know if I have it. Let me pull the month up. I don't know if I rolled that one over this week. I need to do that. Um, and we roll over the dollar index. So I can pull that up for you. Okay. Uh, what's a good dollar index going into it? So maybe you're at you know, dollar index uh, DX future trader. Um, and what do we see here on the NIBOT? And you also see volume really slowing down. But uh, and uh, pretty flat right there in that range. All right. Stay there. We'll be back right after this break. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain in this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. We're told 
to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. TFNN has just announced a special sale for the Gold Report for a limited time only. To celebrate the 660th weekly issue of Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, that's more than 12 years, TFNN is having a special one-time sale. Right now, you can receive 60 weeks of the Gold Report, that's 14 months for only $600. We're offering Tom O'Brien's dynamic weekly newsletter at only $10 a week, half off the regular monthly price. By taking advantage of this special offer, you also get a signed copy of Tom O'Brien's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, an $88 value. The Gold Report is published every Tuesday and provides subscribers with Tom O'Brien's expert commentary on the industry, as well as detailed information on a variety of mining equities. This offer is valid for current or new subscribers, but is only good through this week and ends this Sunday, December 21st. Lock in the low rate of only $10 a week for The Gold Report by placing your order at the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, folks, we'll come on back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. So going through, just looking at um, some of the pieces here, we wanted to make sure we do get our other news uh, parts knocked out. We have, again, you got FOMC in six minutes, so make sure you're ready for that. For tonight, what do you need to be aware of? And for tomorrow morning, um, as a review, we got the Euro final CPI and final core CPI coming on out. That's at 11 p.m. to 7 a.m., looking for somewhere around $35 uh, minimum profit on an iron condor on Nadex. That's buying the lower spread, selling the upper spread uh, over at Nadex.com. Um, and then uh, entering at 11 o'clock for 7 a.m. on the dollar franc, uh, we could do trade their uh, trade balance support, usually uh, 35 pips or less uh, movement. So we're looking for around 35 pips minimum in profit on that trade. We also have the pound retail sales coming on out. Looking at 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. Uh, pound retail sales will come out at 4.30. So if we get in at 11 o'clock and we get to 7 a.m., that gives us plenty of time to potentially catch a nice $35 minimum profit trade on that one. And then you also have another one in the morning that you need to have on your list. And uh, that's a U.S. fully fed manufacturing index. Not a massive mover, by the way, but uh, looking at about 25 pips and looking at getting in the trade at 9 o'clock for an 11 a.m. expiration because the trade will expire right there at, uh, or the, the announcement will come in at 10. So you need to be in before the announcement, get the IV in your favor, get the time in your favor, 
to ideally see if you can pull off getting that um, Iron Condor on. And even if you can't, at least you know what the expected move is on your dollar during that time frame when that specific announcement comes out. Um, don't forget, we also have U.S. unemployment claims coming out at 8.30 in the morning. Uh, look for volume spikes and trades of that sort. And we got the natural gas uh, report coming out at 10.30. So a decent amount of news tonight uh, could cause some uh, things. Also, a couple things to heavily be aware of. we got the EU Economic Summit, day one. So some sporadic stuff can be coming out of these currencies uh, just as, you know, they step out and do press conferences. And we got day two on Friday. Uh, German IFO business coming out at 4 a.m. tomorrow. Shouldn't be a massive thing, but just something to have on your calendar if you are trading that time of night. Big thing for tomorrow night is uh, we're going to have the yen monetary policy statement. And uh, so be very aware of that if you're trading the yen. Not so much a tradable event. Uh, I've got stats on that one put together. But uh, just the statement when they come out can cause some pretty big volatility in the yen, which can be great, uh, can be bad. It depends upon what side you're on and how you're trading it. But uh, don't be caught off guard when that uh, announcement is released. That right there really catches you up uh, where we're at on the news for today. And let's see here. What else can we cover right here at the end? Uh, I was going over yesterday. I was talking about the five-minute binaries. And I wanted to just, you know, remind you, if you haven't checked them out, look at them. I have a lot of traders, uh, a surprising number of traders, uh, that are getting really into these five-minute contracts and loving them. Uh, they're hopping down. They're trading them for like an hour to a day. Uh, one one of the traders was up uh, 250 bucks last night in about an hour. Uh, said he couldn't sleep and uh, got back up and made another $350. So, uh, you know, just trading five-minute contracts. And there's only four markets to watch, so you don't have to be real picky. I mean, you got pound dollar, Aussie dollar, dollar yen, euro dollar. You open up four charts. And, uh, you know, really look at basically using like three-tick diagnostic bars. Really simple. And uh, But the biggest key you got to notice when to stop when you're up because, obviously, you're up, 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 and then all of a sudden things start getting choppy, you give it back. So when you're up, I mean, stop, walk away. So sort of, you know, that's how money management goes. Like when you make that profit goal, stop because uh, it can be really addictive to keep going. And another big thing is set your take profits. Okay? Y'all have a great day, and I'll see you right here tomorrow on the Diagnostic Trading Hour. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.